Welcome to this second lecture on the topic place of Hindi in India. In the earlier lecture, we had discussed till the western forms of Hindi. In this lecture, we will start by discussing the Rajasthani form and the Pahari forms of Hindi and we will discuss other related topics on the, the subject as well. So, first of all, let us discuss the Rajasthani forms of Hindi. It is the third main dialectal group of Hindi. This is spoken in Rajasthan and of course, in the nearby regions also. It has main four forms, Marwadi, Jaipuri, Mewati and Malavi. Now, as you know, Mewat is part of Haryana as a district, as a region, it is part of Haryana. So, it is obvious that in that region, this Mewati is being spoken. In Mewati, you have Haryanavi input also and along with that, you have the input of the other forms spoken in Rajasthan. So, Mewati is somewhere between in its many overlapping linguistic, uh, linguistic forms, somewhere between Haryanavi as well as Rajasthani. However, Mewati is identified as one important form of Hindi and as a language, it also might have pre-existed, it might have folklore, it might have its own songs. But they are all subsumed within the various varieties of Hindi. Then Mewati is spoken in adjoining parts of Rajasthan and in the border areas of uh, somewhere in it might be found in towards Pakistan also because there are places in terms of geographical location where Rajasthan, Haryana, they come in linguistic areas very close to its adjacent parts in our neighboring nations also. Then Marwadi is spoken in the areas of Jodhpur and Bikaner, mainly if you take Bikaner as a center, you may find that Marwadi is spoken in that area. Along with that, Marwadi is also spoken in adjacent parts of Haryana and Gujarat. Now Marwadi speakers are found in various parts of India, because Marwadis have been a migrating communities, they have migrated far and beyond till Nepal for example, till Manipur for example, till Sindh in Pakistan for example. So, there are at least 12 different forms of Marwadi that we may find. However, taking all these forms in from Nepal, Pakistan and such other forms as is spoken in Gujarat also and many other places also, Marwadi becomes a very important form and sometimes Marwadi contributes as the business communication within Hindi and it contributes a lot of words, a lot of expressions which are used often in business expressions in Hindi. Now, Jaipur is spoken, Jaipuri as a language is spoken in the areas around Jaipur. So, that is obvious there is one linguistic area. From Jaipur to Jodhpur, if you go from Jaipur to Bikaner, if you go, you might find areas which where you find the overlapping between the Marwadi and the Jaipuri. So, this is the transition of language, the, the, the transition of that particular form of Hindi. So, in a way, there are lesser standardizations in these forms, though of course, you can always find that which form is prestigious. As for example, in the context of Malavi, which is spoken mainly in the areas around various districts of Madhya Pradesh. In that language, Ujjaini form of Malavi is considered the most prestigious and this you may find in other forms also. That there are various forms within that language because each of these language, each of these dialectal variations, each of these form of Hindi may have further more variations within themselves which may be considered dialects of that particular language as for example, I just now mentioned that the Ujjaini form of Malvi is considered to be the most prestigious form of Malvi language. However, the others are also spoken and the others are also given credit and the others also have their own pride. But often prestige is related to many other historical reasons, many other social reasons and perhaps Ujjain being a very central place, a very important pilgrim place. The form is spoken around Ujjaini which is considered sometimes to be a very auspicious area also in that particular region. Perhaps for this region or there may be other regions also, Ujjaini form of Malvi is considered a very prestigious form of Malavi and the same situation you may find, the same kind of prestige may be attributed to 
one particular variety of any of these languages about which we have talked today, which are by and large forms of Hindi. Now, here kindly note that these forms of Hindi can have several sub forms. What do we mean by sub forms as I just now said, which means that if you take any language, any of these forms, there may be further geographical variations and there may be further social variations. I gave you example from Malvi as Ujjaini being the Malvi spoken Ujjaini being the most prestigious, but of course that is defined in terms of prestige, but there are other forms, sub forms of every language which are are used due to variations in occupation, due to variations in climatic conditions, due to variations of such other atmospheric, climatic, social and such other natural phenomenon. There, there is always an internal dynamics of a status and prestige within these subforms, which often develop due to many, many linguistic reasons. There may be various linguistic principles for development of these subforms. However, in our classrooms, or even though we understand that the status and prestige may be given to a one particular form, we must take care that we do not deride upon, that we do not look down upon any form of language or any subform of any of these languages. Because this is a very natural phenomenon that a particular prestige or a status is attributed to one form of language. This happens with almost all the languages of the world, but we must take care in our curriculum, in our educational transaction that no language is looked down upon because linguistically we have to respect all the languages and linguistically we have to understand that all languages are actually equally good. This is more of the social dynamics which often sometimes gives a particular status or prestige which sometimes change also. Today one form of language may be at given more status, more prestige and tomorrow the other form of language may be given more status and more prestige. For example, in our context today Khadi Boli is given more status, Khadi Boli is given that prestige which is considered to be the standard form of Hindi language. But in earlier times of the enjoyed the similar status. That is why you find that a lot of literature was written even Ramcharit Manas was produced in Hindi and so on and so forth. It happens in every language that the variety which gets a status and the prestige may change from one form of language, from one variety of language to the other variety of language and there may be many economic dimensions also. Sometimes economy plays a very important role in this kind of transfer because it is the economy which often brings the status and the prestige to any language. It is the economically dominant groups form which often becomes the standard form of language as you may see that since Delhi, Meerut, Agra region was economically dominant, politically also it was dominant. Hence the language spoken, the Khari Boli is spoken in this area gradually evolved to be what we consider sometimes today the standard form of Hindi language. Now the fourth main form of Hindi is Pahadi. Now Pahadi as the word itself says that it is spoken in the Pahar which means the mountain areas. So obviously you can guess that it is spoken mainly in the mountainous areas of Himachal and Uttarakhand. But you can understand very well that Himachal and Uttarakhand are the closer areas where Hindi is being, being spoken. But it cannot be restricted only to Himachal and Uttarakhand because the languages spoken in Himachal and Uttarakhand will have far beyond the territories of Himachal and Uttarakhand a reach because the Himalayan territories may have their own internal dynamics. Historically, they may be closer to each other. Hence, form of Pahari's uh, language or Pahari uh, form of Hindi can be found in various adjoining regions in the Himalayas. For example, even in Muri in Pakistan or some other areas which are occupied by Pakistan of Kashmir, in Pak occupied Kashmir and Muri also we find sometimes Pahadi being spoken. There are communities which speak some forms of Pahadi and you may find that there are variations, there are linguistic internal variations and sometimes which are uh, identified also by the influence of the dominant language being taught in today's terms in those areas. For example, in today's 
muri or pahadi spoken in pakistan there may be a, an influence or a dominance of the way urdu is supposed to be spoken in those areas similarly sometimes you find pahadi being spoken in nepal also which is another himalayan region and sometimes it happens so that a nevari which is a completely different group of language it comes from the tibeto burman group of language but even nevari is sometimes which is spoken in nepal in the himalayan regions of nepal not even the terai region of nepal but in the himalayan regions of in the higher regions of nepal nearby kathmandu and such other higher regions of nepal nevari is spoken and that is also classified as pahadi nevari now kindly note here that nevari is a language as i said that it is of a different group of language so now what do we mean by this different group you know that there are two groups of language of course there are many other groups of language but two important groups of language about which i am talking here is one is indo european group and the other is the tibeto burman group there are overall about five language groups in india but here i am talking about mainly these two groups indo european group and the tibeto burman group so indo european group as you can very well easily guess that it is being spoken from india to europe and then there is a tibeto burman group which is being spoken in the northeast part of india and the adjoining parts of tibet and burma burma is the old name of myanmar so the earlier name was given and the name still remains the, the tibeto burman group of language is that language which exhibits the feature of the languages spoken in the area of tibet burma and neighboring regions of india nepal china etc so nevari is a language of the tibeto burman group yet it has a lot of features due to which some scholars place it in the pahadi group of language for example nevari has lots of loan words from the indo european languages including sanskrit because it has coexisted in nepal along with other indo european languages and in that process perhaps it has acquired many features of indo european group so because of these features which are close many times to indo european groups though the language primarily falls in the tibeto burman group because of its tonal variations because of its many other linguistic features the way language is being spoken it it falls in the tibeto burman group primarily yet it can be identified it has been identified by many scholars as the pahadi as form of pahadi within the hindi forms but it can further be debated whether we should include nevari as part of hindi however many scholars have placed it as part of this pahadi which is a form of hindi now apart from the above main four types of dialects there are other forms of hindi also in fact overall there has been about 51 and nowadays identified there are 14 various forms of hindi which are identified as spoken across various parts of india along with khadi boli gradually gaining prominence the other forms of hindi were considered subsumed in the standard form of hindi so that means that all these 49 various forms are subsumed are considered within the standard form of hindi a lot of literature was written in braj till the beginning of 20th century many times in 18th and 19th century when scholars are writing for example when bhartendu harishchandra was writing in hindi you, you may identify the nagri hindi khadi boli hindi but along with that whenever there is a poetic verse to be created in his drama you will find braj being used so there was a time when braj and hindi both of them were being used and along with that till 20th century or earlier uh, or late 19th century you find that for braj there is a large big geographical area which is there even today braj is spoken in a large in a large area and you find that a kind of literature which was produced earlier in the braj boli which was earlier produced in the in the braj language in the braj variety of hindi is being produced even today however simultaneously hindi is also being used and gradually braj is being used in such a way that it is understood by other hindi speakers by the speakers of other forms of hindi so that means hindi as a language of literature is gradually evolving and hindi is becoming subsuming other forms of uh, its other forms which existed 
as the precursor of Hindi and have largely contributed in the formation of Hindi as we speak today. For example, poets like Surdas, poets like Mirabai, Surdas is from Mathura region, poets like Mirabai who is from Rajasthan region where largely nowadays you may find uh, Marwadi being spoken, Keshavda, Rahim, these, uh, they spoke Avadhi, Ras Khan who wrote in Avadhi, Bihari who wrote in Avadhi, then Dev, Dhana, Dhananand, Ghananand, Senapati, Bhushan, Padmakar, many of them who wrote in Hindi and Ratnakar and among others, many, uh, many uh, others, they have enriched the literature in the language in the medieval period and gradually the way they enriched the language that contributed the, to the vocabulary formation and that contributed to the literary formation of contemporary till contemporary times from 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th century. You can find a clear flow of literature originating in the writings, in the poetic creations of these important uh, names that I have just now said like Surdas Mirabai and such others. Jayasi and Tulsi Das, they have contributed immensely in the formation of Hindi language. Though they are supposed to have written Hindi, Tulsi Das have written about 12 books in Hindi, 12 works of by Tulsi Das are known in Hindi. Similarly, Jayasi's Padmakar is a very important text and they all contributed largely to the literary vocabulary of Hindi. In fact, Tulsi Das's work, Ramcharit Manas mainly, have contributed immensely because the kind of word formation that you find, the kind of usages of various words that you find gradually come down till our times and they all have contributed to the formation of the literary sensibilities, the formation of the literary usages in Hindi. Then various Bhak poets like Kabir, Dadu, Rai Das and Guru Nanak and such others, they all have contributed, they have all used the kind of language which is gradually being adapted as the standard form today. Kabir's Dohas, Kabir's writings are found from Punjab till Bihar and they all are being recited in various ways with some variations but gradually contributing to the standardization of Hindi, to the word formation processes, to the syntactic formation processes, to various forms and that is why it remains very important to understand the writings and the poetic creations of all these poets in order to understand the literary form of Hindi because Hindi is a very important language for literary creations today. So, in literature and audiovisual production, we find that Hindi has been very prolific in recent times. For example, in terms of literature, we can see from 19th century onwards, scholars like Bhartendu, Mahavir Prasad Duvedi, Bal Krishna Bhatt, Jayashankar Prasad in 20th century, Sumitranandan Panth in 20th century, then later on Surikant Tripathi Nirala, Mahadevi Verma, Sachidanand, Hiranand, Vatsanage and such others, they all have immensely contributed. And even today there are several prolific writers in Hindi and you can read in journals, magazines, their literary creations. The Hindi film industry and television industry also contributes and also continues has contributed historically and also continues to contribute a lot in Hindi. The publication of newspapers, now Hindi as a language for journalism, this is a very important aspect and very interesting aspect because children study these journalistic form of languages in the newspapers that they get at their homes, in their schools and such other places. So the publication of newspapers and magazine in Hindi, they have immensely contributed to giving Hindi a formal stability. By formal stability we mean here that the, liter the forms of writing writing and the forms of speaking are being gradually accepted as the standard forms. That means some expressions are being standardized. Whenever news is being read in a particular language, like for example in Hindi, some particular expressions are being standardized and the children often tend to learn these languages and these language forms and these expressions. So in that process of standardization of any language, journalism of various types, whether it is audiovisual journalism or it, is, or it is the print journalism, they all contribute immensely and in Hindi also they have contributed. In fact, it contributed right from the beginning in 1826, Udant Martand as a newspaper was published from Calcutta, those days now it is known as Kolkata. So in Calcutta, which is prime 
predominantly a Bengali speaking area from there two newspapers were published initially first was Udant Martand which is often considered to be the first newspaper in Hindi and the second newspaper is Bangadut see the name also is Bangadut but in Hindi and they have contributed immensely they have contributed a lot in arriving at the present form of Hindi as being used in various walks of life. Bengal's intellectual atmosphere has played a significant role in the growth of Hindi newspapers and magazines and in that process in the growth of Hindi language itself. As we have seen that the constituent assembly adopted Hindi in 1949 as an administrative official language of the Union of India, we should try to understand how Hindi has been used historically and how it is being used as an important administrative language today. Prior to 1949 also, Hindi was a prominent administrative language used in erstwhile states of Jaipur, Gwalior and such other places. So you know that in these states, for example Jaipur, the state of Gwalior and many other adjoining states, Hindi was used as the most important administrative language. So Hindi was used administratively by the East India Company also which was functioning from the Fort Williams in Kolkata and later on by the British also. In fact, the British used Hindi and asked several local kings, several local riyasats. Riyasat was the word used for these local royalties in those days, these local kingdoms in those days. So in several riyasats, in several local kingdoms. British asked Hindi to be used because for them it was easier to use Hindi across various regions. For example, Maithili was replaced by Hindi by the Darbhanga estate because British wanted this change for the administrative reasons, for the reasons of ease in administration and financial matters. Now, in 1878 and 79, it was necessary for every official coming from England to India to know Hindi and forms of Hindustani as it was known those days. Now, it simply shows the importance given to Hindi or importance of Hindi in the administrative and other matters those days in 19th century. In 1925, the Congress decided that it would carry on its day-to-day -day work in Hindustani which actually became Hindi. So thus Hindi played a significant role in India as the language of administration, literature, journalism and knowledge transmission to generations. Now this is very important, the last point, the knowledge transmission to generations for last 100 years or so if not a bit more. that. Significant knowledge transmission from one generation to the other generation is happening in Hindi and hence for us Hindi becomes a very important language. Now Hindi is not only the official language of the central government but also the official language of various state governments that we have already seen. It is common knowledge today that in states where the official language is Hindi, most of the educational work is done in Hindi. However, English also remains present often along with Hindi. The high courts of Uttar Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh, Bihar and Rajasthan give their decisions in Hindi and documents can also be submitted in these courts in Hindi. In many states, Hindi is the alternate medium of education till graduation courses in science, humanities, law, etc, etc. So Hindi in education, Hindi in administration, Hindi in journalistic communication, Hindi in literary communication, Hindi in various forms remain very important language. Along with that, Hindi is that language in which often the recruitment examinations for jobs of central government and many state governments are being conducted. Along with that, Hindi often remains as one compulsory paper along with English and other <coughs> subjects in many of these exams for jobs. So, Hindi continues to be a, a very important medium of communication among common people, it is often the most important link language among the people of India. So today in this lecture we discussed mainly about the Rajasthani form of Hindi and the Pahari forms of Hindi. Along with this we saw how Hindi has been an administratively important language in the history of India and how gradually it was adopted in the journalistic and the uh, and the administrative functionings of various uh, parts in India. Even though it was in Kolkata, which was predominantly a Bengali speaking area, 
Hindi was accepted to be a very important language for administrative and journalistic purposes. Hindi has also lots of literary forms along with its sub languages along with other varieties which are all subsumed in Hindi and we discuss today that how the literature written in other languages have contributed to Hindi and how Hindi has been a very dominant language, a very important language in its literary creations. Thank you.